Epson Media Installer works on both Mac and Windows. The two platforms have a very similar look. This is the Mac platform, and the Windows is slightly different, but they behave the same way. So for the rest of these tutorials, we're going to work on the Mac platform. Now that Epson Media Installer is located, I can see what printers Epson Media Installer will work with. On this particular network, I have access to the P700, the P900, and also a P9570. Epson Media Installer will also work with the P7570. When Epson Media Installer launches, there'll be two tabs. Here under Media Management, as it indicates, it'll show the media setting registered to the printer. You can edit or add settings, and that's specific to the printer. In this category and column is the media types. These are the basic media types, photo paper, fine art paper, matte paper, canvas, the media name, any notifications, the status, if it's registered or needs to be acquired, if the media is editable, and if the media is removable. If I were to click on Ultra Premium Photo Paper Luster, I would see that I cannot edit this and I cannot remove this, but I can export it, I can copy it, and we also have the ability to import a different media. But if I were to go to a metallic photo gloss, I see that it is removable, meaning that if this is a paper that I'm not going to be using and I want to remove it, I can go here, click on remove, and then that media will be removed specific to this one printer, in this case the P900, it will not be available in the driver. This is a nice feature for those that want to minimize the number of media that they see in the pull-down menu in their drivers, but you don't have to worry that if in the future you want to bring that media back, Epson Media Installer allows you to reinstall it. If after scrolling through you're missing a media or it's difficult to find, simply hit refresh. If you want to edit a media, let's say cold press natural and you want a wider platen gap, you click on cold press natural. Currently, it says it cannot be edited or it's not editable. So click on copy media. Click okay. So Epson Media Installer has created a copy of cold press natural that highlighted, click on edit. This brings you to the edit media settings. This is an opportunity to change the name instead of cold press natural, of course, copy. Some people like to use abbreviations like CPN for cold press natural. The media type is the category. Is it a fine art paper? Is it a canvas? Obviously for this, we wanna leave that as fine art paper. Some people find that they need to increase the platen gap you can go here and select that and go to a larger setting if needed. Depending on a variety of factors, you can also change the drying time. If you wanted to change the paper thickness, you're actually not changing the thickness of the paper, but this relates to the platen gap. And you have a few other options. And for those that are making custom profiles, this is the profile associated with Cold Press Natural. But if you have a custom profile and it's loaded on your computer, you would click Browse, locate the profile, and you would load that custom profile here. Then click OK. And OK again. This is my new media name along with the parameters that I changed. And it's registered to the P900 and it's ready to go. Now you would need to repeat this process for each of the printers that are loaded. And if you have multiple computers driving different printers, You'll have to repeat the process for each of those printers on each of those computers. In order to import and export files, Epson Media Installer requires EMY files. To create an EMY file that can be shared with others from an edited media, highlight the media and simply click Export. You can load EMY files you have made to load settings on your other computers or EMY files made by others for non-Epson papers by clicking Import. 